Hello, this is Tony. This is Alfred. And we are Black, Black Dice, Dice Gaming. Gaming. So today we're welcoming you to our YouTube channel, yeah. YouTube-ish. Community. We're, yeah. Welcome. It's nice to have friends that actually love to play the game, and um, we actually love doing it ourselves. In That's fact, we're doing uh, this. if you want to introduce yourself, uh, that might be a great idea too, right? Yeah, right? so I've been gaming for probably 20 years now at this point in some form or fashion. God, have we gotten that old? Yeah, right. Uh, whether it be, you know, D&D &D or Star Wars, you name it. What about you? Well, um, I've been a um, DM and a writer for over 20 years, um, so pretty much been doing it for quite a while. Um, been kind of keeping away from the writing portion, but I'm actually starting to go back into writing, which is actually kind of cool. Um, and I think what we'd like to do is probably introduce what we do for the program. Like, I'll tell you right now, I'm I'm the, the I'm basically the person who's going to be running the Dungeons and Dragons portion of this channel. Um, I will answer questions that has been given to us by um, people having to do with Dungeons and Dragons, or even any kind of role playing game. I have played everything from White Wolf to Wizards of the Coast to God, I Call of Cthulhu. I I love, I love the passion and the, the imagination that comes with a good story. And uh, I will be doing the uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol in addition to, uh, you know, painting tutorials and other stuff. So not exclusively D&D &D and uh, Crisis Protocol minis. I'll be painting all sorts of stuff. And um, along with that, I mean, I might actually help in with, um, with him for Crisis Protocol, because obviously for Crisis Protocol is not a one-player game, <laughs> um, and he would definitely probably be helping me for the same. Um, I will probably be doing some um, little tutorials on painting, but my, my painting is more for the um, table ready. You know, not something that's supposed to be down and, you know, something that's supposed to be extremely artistic. It's more down and dirty. So it'll basically give DMs a chance to find out how to paint something faster so they can be able to get play pieces on the board. Um, so I've decided to take my time and go on my Facebook and talk to my friends and family. Hi, friends and family! Um, and um, I was able to pull out a few questions. Listener questions. Yeah, how about that? We already have people interested in us. We're popular. <laughs> so, Mark Lon asks, he says, when did you get into model painting and play? Yeah, about uh, painting? Oh, man. Painting? I started painting before I started playing. My first miniature was a uh, Games Workshop Inquisitor Coteas. He looked so horrible. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh man, I wish I had a picture of that paint job, just so I could compare it to what I'm doing today, because that guy was rough. <laughs> um, actually, um, right now, if you notice that in the background you see a lot of books, we're sitting in our title sponsor's store. Um, this uh, We're at Silver Dragon Games, which is going to basically be our title sponsor for quite a while. Um, I got into my modeling and painting here. Um, the owner of the store um, would paint his own stuff, and I remember that one of the players for Star Wars Legion would come and laugh and say, what would what'd you paint, like a two-year-old? And I'm like, <laughs> that's kind of rude, mind you. I don't want people telling me about how my yeah, painting not the, is. not the best uh, intro to the hobby. <laughs> right? So I decided to basically get my own game going um, of Star Wars Legion and bought a bunch of pieces and I started painting and I've been painting ever since so I'd say I'm definitely nowhere close to as long as you've been painting but I think I've been doing a pretty good job with it at least for at least for table ready miniatures yeah definitely yeah I don't I don't take 12 hours to paint my figures I mean that's not always the purpose of the figure sometimes you know sometimes 
You want the big bad evil lich to look good, and the kobolds don't have to look as good. <laughs> True. Now, when it comes to playing, like I said, I've been dungeon, I've been DMing for about 20 years. I started playing when I was about maybe about 12 ish. Um, no, I was about 14. Um, I started playing um, AD&D um, back then. So basically it allowed me the chance to um, learn about Dungeons and & Dragons. And then I moved to like different games. Um, shout out to Grady Styles who introduced me to um, uh, Vampire the Masquerade. Um, you know, that's, that's one of the things that I did a lot. Yes, I was one of those LARPer kids playing around, but it was still lots of fun. Um, I still love sitting around a table and rolling dice. It's so much better, but to each his own. <clears throat> what about you? Oh, um, first gaming for me is probably uh, third edition D&D back in the early 2000s. Wow. As far as tabletop. Huh. So... Then the next question we have is from um, Emily Lucier. She says, um, how do I get into D&D &D and RPG games in general? Well, that's a pretty good question. Yeah, it is, actually. Um, it depends on what you're trying to do, Emily. Um, if you're trying to uh, be, a, um, be a player, my recommendation is really just Drake Player's Handbook. I mean, that's really all you need to get yourself started on creating a character that is in-depth um, and allowing you to be able to um, enter yourself into the imagination setting of your DM. And that goes for most, uh, you know, RPG systems, not just D&D, &D, but I mean, you know, Star Wars or Dark Heresy. Um, your core rulebook and your player manual is going to be the key um, to start you off. Those are really the only two books you as a player actually need. Absolutely. Um, another thing is, is if you're a DM, I always call it the Holy Trinity. That is where we go into the player's handbook, the monster manual, and the DM guide. What that does is it gives you a full, um, a full look at the whole realm. It doesn't just give you classes and races. It gives you the monsters and the beasts of the field. It gives you the dungeons and the um, settings that you're going to be running your people in. Because remember, as a DM, you are literally an objective viewer of the world. You are God. <laughs> so, um, how many dice sets is too many? <laughs> That's a false premise. There's never too many dice sets. Oh, God. Yeah, I'm... <laughs> I'm sitting at right now about three pounds worth of dice, and I am a hoarder, and I'm, I, I have so many dice, and they all do different things, um, but um, one thing that I do state is, um, think about the uh, setting that you're in, and the dice system that rolls, that goes with it. Um, if you're talking about things like Vampire to Masquerade, all you need are D10s. Um, the 5th edition actually has a special D10 set. My suggestion is always getting double the amount. You're never going to run out of dice to roll, and it's just a safe thing in case some players do not have their own dice that you can actually share with them as well. Yeah, that's always a good suggestion. Now, when you're talking about D&D, um, &D, that's a little bit of a different story because each die has a different thing that they do. So you definitely want a D20, at least one. Um... A couple of D4s, because, you know, potions of healing. Yeah. Um, at least four D6s. These D6s are going to be able to help you roll your actual character. So you're going to need them. Um, I'd say maybe one or two D8s and maybe a couple of D10s. And um, you'll notice that there are some D10s that they'll have two numbers on each little side. Those are the percentiles. So basically the ones that say 50, 40, 30, 20, those are your percentile, and then you roll another one, and that gives you your actual percentage. You do actually want at least one of those. Um, I'm pretty sure I think Star Wars works the same way. Yeah, it's <clears throat> basically just a reskin of 3rd uh, edition D&D. So your D20s, your D10s, your D8s, D4s, and D6s. Uh, and then some D3s, but you can... You know, if you're not, if you're just starting out, you can just use a D6 
and you just divide it by two and you just round up. And so your three, your six becomes a three, your four becomes a two, you know. Right. A three would be a one and a half, which is a two. Um, another thing that I was thinking, and this makes, this actually makes good for a sense is a d12. I didn't even think about that. If you're rolling a barbarian, you're definitely going to want your d12s. That's your hit points. So you're definitely going to want a d12 to go with it, but you're going to be rolling that d12 very rarely. And the moral of the story, I think, here is get more dice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't, think, I don't think I've ever had a time where I could say, I need more dice. But I can always use more. I love Just get dice. more. Oh, yeah. You can never have enough. So, um, classes. Classes for, for, for beginning players. <clears throat> hmm. My suggestion is, um, I would say if you were to be a beginning player in Dungeons and Dragons, um, avoid spellcasters. <clears throat> I think that's a pretty safe suggestion for any system. Yeah. Um, spellcasters give a lot of information that you're going to have to really take some time to learn. Um, I'd say sit next to someone that plays a spellcaster class. That way you can learn how they cast their magic, what their magic does, and how they keep tabs on everything that they do. Yeah, there's just a lot more going on for the beginning player than most of these other classes. You know, a, a barbarian or a paladin just doesn't have to worry about this stuff. Before you even get into, you know, the fact that a lot of these classes have their own spell books and stuff, you know, so this is, as a player, a whole additional book now that you need access to. You know, like for Star Wars, if you're trying to play a Sith or a Jedi, you need an entirely new rule book. True, and even though you don't need a new rule book for Dungeons and Dragons when it comes to spells, um, last count, I mean, I, I got to 100 and I stopped. There are so many spells, and um, in the future, Emily, I will tell you right now, I will take time to actually make a video dealing with just spells, so that we can go through for, through cantrip all the way to the ninth level and talk about what we think are the best spells because yes that is a great video in and of itself so even though it may not sound like we've really gotten to it we will get to that in the future my suggestion is to play something that does not have spells and that does not have a lot of tricks to it uh, any kind of martial class is going to be your best bet yeah your fighter is definitely great um, a barbarian uh, it can be a little tricky, but still, it's you. It's still easy to do. Um, I've played since the beginning as a rogue. I've always played rogues. I've always played halflings. I don't know why. I love the idea of being invisible. So in that case, that's always worked for me. Um, my suggestion, though, Emily, once again, is to think deep within yourself and to find what you think is the best class for you. As long as you're willing to put in the work, you can make anything work. As we state before, we, uh, as I may have stated or may not have stated, we're not professionals in any type of way. Um, this is really our just our viewpoints. Um, if you do have any other viewpoints that you would like for us to probably work on as another video, or even uh, viewpoints on the questions that we have already answered, feel free to leave that in the comment section. Section, we'll be glad to answer everyone. Um, as much as we can, um, probably making videos in the future about them. So remember, what our community gives us is what we will give to the community. So please feel free to give us your comments. Um, the next one is, um, what is the best paint to use when painting a miniature? I mean, that's like, you know, asking what the best movie is. It's just almost impossible to answer. <laughs> Um, I mean, for me, I think Vallejo, Vallejo and Citadel are both good starting uh, paints to work with. Um, Vallejo, I think, is a little bit easier um, to work with initially, just because of the droppers and the consistency of it. Um, but on the other hand, also, Vallejo requires you to have uh, more coats. Yes. But, yes, they do. frankly, that also is what you want. You don't want thick coats on your model. It's, you want several thinner coats. And remember, whenever you're painting, to always use a little bit of water in your brush 
you definitely want to be able to make that paint flow. Um, paint really gets dry real fast, so you definitely want to do that. Yeah, I, I mean, a wet palette also helps with that a ton, too, but that's a little bit more of an advanced technique. Oh gosh, and if I'm correct, uh, is it expensive? I've actually never had one. No, uh, you can find a good wet palette on Amazon for probably like 20 bucks. The papers are, you know, you can find tissue paper replacements for them really cheap. Now, shout out to other um, other people that have done this. Um, I do know that there is a um, painting uh, site on um, the D and D uh, D and D YouTube channel that they are really big into uh, Vallejo paints, and um, the Vallejo paints they use are the Game Master series. They're rather nice. Um, I'm actually a big fan of Citadel. Um, I've used a little Vallejo, but most of mine have been um, purely Citadel paints. Um, they still flow well, but like I said, a little water goes a long way. I mean, what Citadel has on Vallejo is their washes and oh, contrast God. paints, phenomenal. Yes. And uh, also technical paints. That's just something that Vallejo really doesn't have. Uh, you know, rust or uh, blood or other, you know, dirt and stuff. <laughs> oh, blood for blood, God. Can't God. live without it. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um... What's an appropriate version of D&D &D to play for beginners? Um, You've run 5th edition more than me. I think 5th edition is probably the most beginner friendly. Yeah, um, I'll tell you right now, um, by the way, these, uh, the last two, the last question and this question comes from Constance Grimley. Um, Constance, um, I would say go with the um, version that is being played now. So let's just say we're 10 years ago and we just and 3.5 is going out going around and everyone's switching to 4.0 um if everybody's still comfortable with 3.5 and they're doing that go with what everybody else is doing because you're going to have people who know what they're doing to be able to guide you through the system um many times i have seen people pick up a book and think yes i can dm this and then go out and completely fail <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've done it myself, and it is embarrassing. So my suggestion is to go with what people do, and I'd say play the game a few times first. Even if you decide that you want to do, do DMing, play first. You want to understand the rules to the game so you can help people when the time comes that they say, Hey, DM, what do I roll in this situation? Er, 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 yeah, you definitely don't want to do that. You want to be too legit to crib. So, yeah, I, yeah, that was good. Had the worst thing. That was good. <laughs> so, Robbie actually quizzed us. This is actually a really great series. I will admit, of questions. I knew almost none of these. <clears throat> Robbie, I'll tell you right now, you helped me with a few of them, and the information load I gained is enough to actually create a video in and of itself. Um, the first one that Robbie asked was, "What's D and D's original name?" Well, Robbie. You know that you know that I asked actually answered those questions for you because I didn't want to sound dumb on video. <laughs> um, I was actually correct on this one. Um, D and D uh, was actually Chainmail. It was created by Gary Gygax. Um, Gary Gygax was a um, was a pioneer in the industry. And he was someone that actually basically got us all together at a table to play games. Yeah, I mean, if it wasn't for Gary, then. A lot of these other RPGs don't even make it here. Yeah, I mean, shout out to Gary. Um, in fact, the last uh, the last Gary Con was missed due to the fact about this whole COVID crisis. Yeah. Um, a lot of people lost money, and a lot of um, a lot of the situations were missed because of it. Um, I do hope that um, if you have uh, bought your gear for for Gygax, that you have done so. If not. Do buy some gear, you know they they lost a lot of money due to that uh, situation. They literally had to cancel real fast, and that's yeah. sad because it was like right at the beginning of the crisis. Yeah, that's rough. Yeah, it was actually ridiculous. Um, the next one is what does Thaco mean? This one I actually got right too because the like I said I've uh, DM'd uh, 3.0 and 3.5. I've played AD&D. I've never DM'd it. 
And my DM just made me keep, uh, he just kept asking, drilling it into my head, what does DACO mean? What does DACO mean? Well, DACO actually is an acronym. It means to hit armor class zero. So this is to basically the number you have to roll to hit a hypothetical figure or hypothetical creature um, at zero. So that would be basically where you're looking for with that question, Robbie. Um, the, another question he asks is in second edition, what is the difference between dual classing and multi-classing? Um, I will get real short with this, Robbie, um, because you're the one who helped me with this. Um, dual classing is basically where you play a class for a certain amount of time, and then you play another class to catch up to it. Um, it's no longer used now as much um, as that. Uh, multi-classing is where you start out right away, basically down and dirty. You've got, you're basically keeping everything as normal as it can, and you can go up to three classes with that. Dual classing you never could. Um, I am going to eventually make a full video of this, so Robbie, keep posted on that one, okay? Um, what is the first edition that you could play a dwarf wizard? I mean, that's heresy, is it not? Right? <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you right now, I actually told Robbie that I thought it was much earlier. It is actually 3.0. It's just crazy. I was surprised. And it made sense when I looked it up and I looked up the information that, yes, second class dwarves had spell, class, spell casting resistance. So, of course they could cast spells. I'm like, I didn't think about that. It never came into my idea. Name a campaign setting other than Forgotten Realms and Eberron. So, um, campaign settings um, is not the city. A lot of people like to say, oh, well, the Sword Coast is a campaign setting. It's not. Campaign settings are worlds. <clears throat> worlds or indeed. realms. Or, yeah. So There are a lot of planes. He said Forgotten Realms and Eberron, so I'm going to go ahead and state that Exandria, which, shout out to, Crit uh, shout out to Critical Role, <laughs> um, is actually one of the newest ones that have come out. Um, Theros and Ravnica come from the uh, Magic the Gathering worlds. Yeah, there's quite a bit of Magic the Gathering uh, realms now. The sad now. thing is, I've never played Grand Magic. I know, that is heresy. Don't look at me like that. You Don't look at say me. that on camera. I yeah. know. <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> um... Another one is um, another one that we've talked about before is Dragonlance. Oh Both my God! Why Lance. hasn't Fifth Edition done Dragonlance? Because that would be so amazing. I'm sure, there's a reskin of it somewhere on the internet. You know, the sad thing is the player handbook mentions Dragonlance, but there has never been a Dragonlance setting book in Fifth Edition yet. Get on it, wizards! Right? Come on! Um, so, I feel that we've answered most of the questions. Um, yeah, I, I think we've bloviated long enough. Yeah, I would say, um, to just end this off, I'm going to um, let you know a little bit about what I'm going to be doing in the future. That dual classing and multi-classing will probably be one of my first videos to come up next. Um, there were some other questions that I wasn't able to get to. Those will be also full-fledged videos, so please... If I haven't answered your questions, or if we haven't answered them, please keep stay tuned. We're definitely going to answer them in the future. Yep, keep sending them our way. Anything you're going to be doing in the future? Uh, yeah, you guys should be looking out for a unboxing video of uh, Corvus Glaive and Proxima Midnight, in addition to a uh, painting tutorial for them. Oh, God, I can't wait. Yeah, I'm looking forward to them. They are powerhouses in crisis protocol they're going to be changing up the meta in a big way so yeah keep tuned stay tuned um unfortunately i don't have anything to paint yet um i am going to possibly be painting something in the future i just do not know so stay tuned you'll be finding that in the future as well um and just to say goodbye this is tony this is alfred happy, happy trails, trails.